Kia ora everyone, welcome back. It's session number four for our, our series, Not Ashamed, Thrive. So equipping disciples to be disciple makers. So this is a place where we're going to have real talk about what it means to be thriving in Christ. We're going to talk about the obstacles that we face as disciples. And we're also going to talk about how God helps us overcome those key steps, those application points that help us keep growing as disciples and to be excited in our journey as disciples so that it's not a task, it's not a burden, but it's a joy and it's something that we're just thriving in. So welcome back. Thank you for joining us. I've got my amazing team with me today. I've got Eileenia with us. She's joining us from in the South Island. She's a chaplain for our Christchurch Adventist School and she's also a residential youth worker. And tell us one other thing about yourself, Eileenia. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, if there was one thing that I could eat for the rest of my life, I am a lover of all things sushi and rice balls. Oh, sushi for the rest of her life. Wow. I don't know if I could do that, but awesome. <laughs> I also have um, with me today, Genesis. He's a tertiary student studying at Auckland University. He's studying law and health sciences. So we have a lawyer in the house or a future lawyer, although he talks like he's already a lawyer. He's amazing. Genesis, tell us one thing about yourself. Hello, for everyone. Um, I play the piano. Not really well, <laughs> but I play it. I try my best. And if I was to learn a new instrument, it would be the saxophone. I really Ooh. want to that's awesome. I, my brother tried to learn the saxophone once and it was a bit painful. So I'm praying for everyone else in your house. Awesome. And wow. the, other person I have with, the other person we have with us today is Pastor Ray or Ray Ray coming to us from Queensland. He's a pastor, father, husband. He's an influencer. He's about being out there in the community, making connections through many different streams. He's an awesome guy. Ray Ray, one thing about yourself. I like to do cartwheels. I have three daughters, so I've been practicing during COVID. Let's just say that. Oh, right, give, wow. give us a demonstration. Give us a demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> My knock over some furniture. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for joining us tonight, guys. Well, tonight in series number, um, session number four, we're going to be talking about identity and what it is to be growing in Christ. So it's a discipleship series. So we're talking about who we are, our identity in Christ. And my first question tonight is, why is it so significant that we have a clear sense of our identity in Christ? Like, why is it important? What does it even matter? Is it okay for us just to kind of know who we are in Christ and just take it as it comes? Or is, it, is there some reason why we need to know our identity in Christ? Why is it important? Um, you know, there's this program called Missing Pieces in New Zealand. I don't know if they have it in Osbro, but, you know, just some of the, the common factors for, oh, well, anyways, if you don't know what the show's about, right, it's about these people, you know, they're growing up, they're about adults, and uh, they want to find maybe their true parents, or they want to find their biological siblings or something like that. And the most common reason that they give um, to why they want to find these people is because they feel like a part of them is missing and that their lives are not complete you know and although they haven't known these people all their lives although these parents who left them when they were babies have done nothing for them they still feel a massive void in their hearts right and so i feel like you know for us as believers as disciples you know could it be that no, maybe, maybe it is that much of the time, you know, knowing who we belong to, knowing who our parent, our spiritual parent is, right, um, kind of fills that void in our hearts, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, makes life worth living. And so um, I, I think that's one of the reasons why I personally find it important for us to know our, our identity in Christ, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe that's one of the reasons that other people feel as well. Hmm. Um, I love that. I like that. I like that example that you used there, Genesis. Um, being a chaplain, but in the Sarah J mentioned earlier um, that I'm also a residential youth worker, and some of the young people that I work with come from all walks of life. 
and they belong, they, they come from different families or they've come from, fo from foster homes or different group homes um, into the residence that I work at. And, and I, I work with these awesome young people, but then I also look at the life that I grew up in. And I sit there and at times I find myself comparing myself to them and them and comparing them to me and saying, man, I'm so lucky. Um, I've been so fortunate to grow up in a place where I was able to identify and know where I fit in, in my family, in my family, in my family. Um, and then I sit there, I wonder where, where, which point in their lives, or if at all, do these young people think, I'm in this residential place, but where do I really fit in? Where, where should I really be? Um, and I sit there and I'm like, man, I, we have such an amazing God. And I think it's so important that when we are, are able to identify ourselves in Christ, but also with our family, is that we also acknowledge and honor those who haven't as well. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I pray and I pray and I spend time um, with God, just being like conversations with them about those young people that I work with. And I'm just like, man, I really do hope that as these young people journey through life, that they are able to get just a glimpse of feeling of knowing where they belong and where they come from and where they can place themselves. And hopefully along that journey, that fingers crossed as disciples, that we want everybody that we come across to find themselves um, identifying themselves in Jesus Christ. Yeah, and like I'm listening to you guys talk and I'm like, man, that's so true. And I don't know if there's any point when you stop needing to grow in your identity. I don't know if there's any point when we actually arrive and say, I know everything there is to know about who I am in Christ. And I think of people even who've grown up in the church and have grown up knowing and being told and hearing, you're a child of God and singing those songs, Jesus loves me, this I know. Um, you know, all the children's songs that claim your identity in Christ and being a child of Christ. But at what point does the knowing and the hearing become the sense of belonging, like a knowing in your heart? Uh, at what point do you go from um, really from sort of knowing about it to claiming it and it, being sure in your identity, like really sure? Because so many of us in the church, I can remember times when I've been in the church, I can stand there, sing the songs. I can hear the words, I can read the scripture, but I don't know if I've always actually owned it, claimed it and said, that's me. Like when I've read pieces of scripture and I said, that's me, I'm that child. I'm the child of God. Yeah, I think for me, um, I think the question is about, because identity is, all, is always about who, 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 who am I? But I think for me, I have to go back one step further and go, it's not, a, it's not a matter of who, but a matter of why. Like, why is, why is, why am I created? Like, why, why was I put on this earth? Because when you understand your why, and there's, there's many books and many authors and, and, and many speakers that speak on this. When you understand your why, that gives birth to your who and your what, what meaning, what am I supposed to do? Who am I, who is, who is, who am I, do, who do I identify with? But for me as a disciple, as a, as a created being, if I understand why I was created, then I therefore identify as, well, who created me? Oh, that's right, God. And then what I'm created for, that's all part of the identity piece. So I think I'll start with the why and go, man, I'm here to reflect God's glory and to worship and, 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 you know, and give praise to him, but also impact others as well. So it's a question of, for me, it's a question of why. Yeah, and like just feeding off that too, like I love that. And, it, and it's also not just who am I, but whose am I? Yes. Like who do I belong to? And I know growing up and we learn to do um, our genealogy and Maori culture, and that's what it always is. You always reference your land, the place you come from, your parents, and actually acknowledging who you are comes last because it's about where you were born and who you came from that creates part of your identity. And how powerful is it for us as Christians where we can know who we, whose we are, which influences who we are as Christians. So knowing God right. shows me who I am. Mm. Yeah. Okay, awesome. I'm going to move on to the... Oh, no, go Genesis. No, 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 no. I was just... 
agreeing with you out loud. <laughs> okay, awesome. I was just trying to think of a way I can put that onto a t-shirt and wear it around now. <laughs> <laughs> who, who am I as opposed to whose I who's, am? Who's I am. Uh, anyway, next question. <laughs> What can block us from knowing our identity or what can distort our identity in Christ? Because I work with a lot of people and I know there's times myself when I've looked in the mirror and I haven't seen what God told, has told me that I am. Okay. My picture of who I am can be really distorted and other people can influence that as well. So what blocks us from knowing our identity or how, does our, how can our identity be distorted? I think that's part of the answer. Well, a answer, I should say. We don't have all the answers, but I'd like to think we'll give it a good go. Um, <laughs> but it's just the fact that how what, what others say who we are. Because that, at the end of the day, that really has resonance or that intercepts our, our, our mindset, our way of thinking. Because if someone says something about us, you know, they say sticks and stones won't break my bones, you know, or whatever. It does. Words do actually break you. <laughs> like, mm. it's very evident. It's, it's not only scientific, but the way that the world is, people's words carry a lot of weight. And when that weight has come across you and it's, and it's barraged you or it's T-boned you and, it's, and it feels there's discomfort, there's pain, there's hurt, whatever someone says against you or about you with you knowing or not knowing, that has an incredible ramification on what you believe about yourself. So again, and then also the, the, the blockage is also self-belief and self-doubt. Because mm. if you get told enough times that, hey, you're, you're actually not really that good at that thing. You know, like if I was to tell <laughs> uh, Genesis, Genesis, you're not even actually good at saxophone. Can you please give it up? Before he's even started, oh my goodness. Like, why would he even pick it up? Even though in himself, he wants to, you know, so if I'm telling him, obviously that's not his identity, but that's just an example. If I keep telling someone enough times that they're not capable of something, you end up taking on that self, that, that, that negative thought and going, oh, well, that is who I am. That's my identity. I'm a, I'm a failure. Yeah. And I think about myself too. And I think, man, I can, I can think of all the times I've given God an excuse. So, so every time God's asked me to do something and I've had an excuse, I think I'm actually questioning my identity. Like he's asked me to do something. I'm like, Lord, remember my past. Like I've mentioned that before or um, Lord, I'm not good enough. And he's like, no, hang on. Who are you? You know, like he's saying, you're good enough. You're my child. And I'm not claiming that identity. I'm having an excuse for why I can't do something. And I think even in church, our identity and how we wrestle with identity is that you're a child of God, yes, if you do all these things. Like, you've got to work at being a child of God. Like, you've got to put in the time. You've got to have the right roles at church. You've got to do it the right way. You've got to keep um, the commandments a certain way. Like, that's what secures your identity. So we've been given an, our identity, but we've got to do more, a few more things to secure our identity in Christ. I think it's also an issue of imposter syndrome, eh? You know, the imposter syndrome is like pretending to be someone you're not. Come on. And then you end up riding that wave of like, oh, I, I have to keep up this facade, this illusion that I am this person because if I don't, I don't know what my, I don't know what else, who, I don't know who I am without this facade or this make-believe persona that I've created um, either by myself or other people's perception. And so that's such a danger that we have, particularly as, I guess, Christians, um, and even more so as a, as, as a disciple, like stop pretending to be someone that you're not. Like if you're not known to memorize scripture from start to finish, don't pretend like you can or pretend to quote as like, Hey, I'm on a journey. It's not perfect, but you know, so I think that's a, that's a big thing that plays in my mind as well. Man, the pressure, eh? Once you say I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, man, we're good at putting pressure on ourselves, like to perform, like yeah. to be a certain way. Like I'm just feeling it, like the pressure, yep. the pressure, man. You know, just just really, hearing. Oh, sorry, you go, sis. You go, you go. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just like, oh my gosh, love this. You talk to me right now. Um, it reminds me of this song. Two things reminds me, reminds me of the song, um, I can't remember what it's called, but in the lines it says, I am, I am who you say I am. I am mm -hmm. chosen, not forsaken. Man, 
and I know I know about you probably Ray probably could um speak into this as well but those who are listening if if like me I'm I'm a pastor's kid I'm a pastor's kid my 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 dad's a minister um and we'll talk if we're talking about identity you, you know there's the identity and you know first of all young pacifica female chaplain uh you know residential youth worker pastor's kid and you have all these different identities and it's been Siri Jane, you, you, you mentioned before about people speaking in and you know and you have and you have all the, you have all these titles and then you have all these expectations and you're like where the like where the heck am i where the heck am i and then i and then i think of that song you know what people can say i'm this people can say this but that song just reminds me i am who you say I am and people can speak into it but to know that first of all I am a daughter of the most high and when we share that with our young people you are the, your sons and daughters of the most high is that how does that actually look like and how do we show that but for me I'm just like man I'm just going to hold on to that promise hold on to that verse that I am who God says I have God mm. says I am mm. amen you know I was just earlier on when you were talking about how sometimes we linger on who we are, sis, um, SJ, and what we've done, right? It's, I just thought immediately of the, um, the story of the fall of man in the garden. You know, just as soon as sin entered the world, they were afraid of God. This man who they had just been walking side by side with in the garden, they became afraid of him. Mm-hmm. And so I think to answer the question, you know, what blocks us from, um, knowing our identity in Christ. It's unfortunate because because of our sin, we're separated from God, right? There's a something in between us that keeps, a, keeps us from him. And so I think what keeps, what blocks us from knowing our identity in Christ is knowing his identity, knowing who he is. Because for Adam and Eve, after the fall, they thought of God as a judgmental, unmerciful, unloving being, right? But they forgot who his identity actually is, right? Love, mercy, forgiveness, grace, and all these things. And so for me, I know that I, you know, sometimes um, forget who I am because I forget who God is, you know, and I forget what he's capable of doing for me in my life. I forget what he's already done, you know, for me in my life. And I forget how much power there is in the blood, you know, mm. that, he, that he covers us with. And so um, I know that, I don't know about anybody else, but I know that for me, you know, the only way that I can overcome that, you know, is to commune with him, you know, mm. just like how we, you would know your husbands or your wives is just spend time with them. And so, yeah, I guess, you know, for me, I, I think it's also common in a lot of young people today as well, you know, and it doesn't help when there are people in the church who distort God's identity, you know? Oh, come on now, bro. Somebody come say on. amen. Somebody Let's say amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't help when there are people in the church who distort oh, God's character, you know? And so um, I think that's something that we as a church need to work on. Yeah. Uh, we need to remind ourselves that we are beacons of his light. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I think that's something that blocks us. I I think, can I just add to that? Like, I I couldn't help but think when you fast forward from uh, the book of Genesis all the way through to the Gospels, where the character by the name of Peter, like he's gun ho guns blazing for Jesus, like Jesus, I'll go wherever you want me to go. And I would spread the good news. And Jesus like, bro, you're gonna deny me, you're going to deny me. Like, because now what do you want about like, who said, who said, who, (laughs) who told you? (laughs) And then it gets to the point where Jesus now taken away, about to be crucified. Peter's now in this pressure cooker and people are like, hey, aren't you that guy that you like bots that you're telling everyone like I'm gun blazing for you? Jesus like, no, 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 jokes. Uh, it wasn't me. Then his whole world comes crashing down the minute he hears that rooster and he's just like destroyed. Like at, I, you can just imagine. And I think I, re- I have resonance with that because I myself am like that. 
like Peter, who like, I'm all guns and blazing, like, God, I'll do, I'll do whatever you, you know, how many times, real talk, how many times have we said this prayer? Lord, if you save me now, I'll do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> Jesus, if you get me out of this, this situation, I promise I will, I'll be a deacon for you. I will be a church member for you. I've, and... I've never said that. I've never <laughs> said that. What are you talking about? So, so, so here's, here's the cool thing about Jesus and God in terms of fast forward again, and, G- and like Peter doesn't show up until this, this part of the gospel where like they go fishing and then Jesus comes back and he talks to Peter and it's like, Peter, brah, he doesn't have to say, remember that time you denied me? He just said, Peter, you want to follow me? Peter's like, please, how do, like, what do I do? How do I redeem myself? He's like, I'll get you involved. Feed my sheep. Mm-hmm. You still have a part to play. And then mm-hmm. therefore, Peter thought he lost his identity. And I want to nail back what you said, Genesis, but Jesus restores Peter's identity. Hallelujah. Amen. He lost it himself. Hallelujah. He's like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not, I've, I've denied. But Jesus says, hey, I've restored your identity and I've given you a responsibility. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you're not just restored, but you're also responsible now to be able to go out and, and do the good things that you do. So, yeah, identity I'm restoration the, is so powerful. I'm thinking on the same thing as you, Ray. Um, like, as you were talking and as Genesis was talking, I was like, at what point did um, Peter stop being a disciple? Hmm. He didn't. No. At no point did we read that Jesus, uh, Peter stopped being a disciple or Jesus dismissed Peter as a disciple. Hmm. Like, we have this myth that to be a disciple of Christ then we have to be perfect all the time and we have to always get it right. And so we can walk around acting like a disciple rather than having this love and mercy and grace shown as we interact with each other as disciples and being authentic in our journey through the highs and the lows. And we fail or we deny God like Peter did, but we remain a disciple. We don't get our membership removed from us or we don't Mm -hmm. get our identity removed from us Mm -mm. we can go through a low but god always restores us and he restores us above and beyond where we were before and it's a beautiful thing that no matter where we're at and for anyone who's watching no matter where you're at as a disciple god doesn't call you to have it all together god calls you to him and he's the one that gets you together And that's the highs and the lows. Your identity in Christ as a disciple is not dictated by your actions. It's dictated by when you come to Christ and he gives you that identity and you claim it and you've got to live it. Like I'm a disciple for Jesus and I could fail tomorrow and it doesn't make me less a disciple. It just gives me the opportunity to experience more of God's grace. Man. Okay. Third question. We've got to keep moving. So, so we're talking about this, we've talked about the obstacles, but really how does God help us overcome or how, what can we do to strengthen our identity in Christ? Some encouragement. All right, I'm just going to, I had two verses. I'm going to go with one. But, um, you know, we, we all know the Beatitudes in Matthew, Matthew 5. And um, I'm just going to pick one because I know that a lot of people have been experiencing this. But, it's, you know, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so I know that, um, you know, and if we go through all the Beatitudes, we'll see that it's, you know, um, the, the peacemakers and all these people who are kind of, you know, not really... High, highly esteemed kind of people, but these are people who are going through things, right? And so God has identified them, but God has placed a blessing, a blessing over them. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think, you know, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you identify yourself. It doesn't matter if you identify yourself as a mourner or as a, a rich person, as a poor person, uh, you know, um, there's a blessing for every, every person, no matter how low they identify themselves as you know so for me i think this week to come the challenge is for me to understand that no matter how i identify myself as god has a blessing for me god has a blessing Mm -hmm. for me my god wants to bless me and if i could just understand that you know perhaps i would have a better understanding of who i am in him in Mm -hmm. jesus amen thanks genesis awesome um 
I love Ephesians chapter 2, um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. I, we are young people, whoever's listening, family, whoever's watching, you are God's masterpiece. We can every day identify ourselves as this and this and this. Um, but my take home for this is that when I look in the mirror, I can brush away every negative thing that people have said about me or even sometimes I say about myself and to know and to claim um, this verse right here that we are God's masterpiece, that we and you are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. And let's claim that. Let's claim mm -hmm. that as we look in the mirror that we see Jesus in us and know that when we walk those corridors at work or school, walk into a room, is to know that everything we do, these are God's characteristics and know that I can claim that because Jesus said so. Mm, there's a challenge for you guys every week, look in the, every day this week, look in the mirror and actually look say in it. The yep, look in the mirror, actually say it. I am God's masterpiece. Cool. When you got your reflections during back at you, man, that's some positive self-talk. Awesome. Ray. I, I, I can't help but think of the verse by Paul, um, the Apostle Paul in Romans 12, verse 2. In the New Living Translation, it says this, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then, then you will know, uh, no, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So for me, identity comes from uh, who you know, not what you know, right? Amen. And so that identity piece is really about when Paul says, don't let the behavior customs of this world, but he says, let God transform you. I'm going to say that again, and I'm going to pause intentionally on that. Because often we think it's something that we have to do for our, for our identity piece. But Paul says this, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So it's not me that changes, it's God who changes me. And then I will then learn to know what his will is and what he wants of me. So my take home piece, and I hope it is your take home piece as well, is like, let God change you. Don't, don't try and do it on your own because clearly it's not working. Because <laughs> we are all sitting here <laughs> as products of people who try to feel bots it and try to do it on our own. But my take home is that, I'm going to allow God to change the way I think by just through prayer, asking invitation, but also surrendering that thought of going, I can't do it. It's all on you. I'm going to let you transform me so I can help transform others for your kingdom. Wow. Mm. Can I, can I add something on to what Ray just said? I was feeling impressed. Sorry. Please sorry. go, go, go. I just, I just love how you said that God will change us. I just, the only thing that I want to say is that, you know, when God changes us, he doesn't change a part of us. The Bible says that for any man who is in Christ, he is a completely whole new thing. You know, the old thing is gone. SJ, what you did before, that's not even you anymore, right? It's a new person. Yeah. And so I just thank God that, you know, the new person that he's making me to be is not, there's no part of me, old part of me left. Yeah, so hallelujah. And, that, and that's so sorry. I'm we're all gonna start steamrolling into the same, but this is the cool thing about it. Like, it says that you know, like what you said, that it's we're a whole new thing, so the old you doesn't exist anymore. And so, I think that's the thing that's the such the kicker that we often forget. It's like, ah, oh, I don't have to live up to those expectations of before because mm -mm. I'm now I'm this new person, I'm this new creation, and I just I just love that thought. Thanks, Jenna. And like, I'm just going to, I've got my own verse, but I'm going to finish with it. But real quick, that word let, let God, like he doesn't force us, but we've got to give him permission. We've, and all that is, is letting go. Like it's just saying, okay, Lord. And then he does all the work, but let, we have to give God permission. And that's a beautiful thing. You want your identity reshaped in Christ. You want to know your identity. You want to claim your identity. All you've got to do is let. Like, what a beautiful thing. 
And um, I just want to finish with this verse that I've got from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11. I love this. It says, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. So the one who makes people holy, God, and those who are made holy, us, we're holy. I don't know if you have got it that yet. Like with all our expectations, we are holy. We are of the same family as God and Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters. What a beautiful gift it is to have our identity in Christ. I want to encourage anyone who's watching us, wherever you're at with your journey in God, God has called you as his disciple. He's called you to claim his identity in him. Like Ray said, all you've got to do is let. Let God transform you. Let God do the work in you. Let him make your identity sure. I pray that you may be encouraged tonight as you continue to grow as a disciple who makes disciples. We're called not just to be consumers of his word, but sharers of his word. May you be encouraged as you grow in your identity and through your own identity, you will encourage others to know their identity in Christ also. Be blessed.